Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I am in this video, I am going to be setting up my 1994 Marlins season in Stratomatic Baseball. Now, if you're aware, if you follow the channel, you know that I'm doing a 1994 White Sox season in Out of the Park Baseball. However, Out of the Park and Stratomatic are completely different monsters. Out of the park, first of all, I'm just the manager. I'm not the general manager. Really, I won't be the general manager here either. But, um, but the general manager and out of the park can make deals for my team, uh, for my '94 White Sox, and put players who were never at all on the White Sox on the White Sox. So, um, but. With this 1994 season, we are going to be playing with players that were actually on the Marlins. Now, why the Marlins? Because I loved their uniforms. I loved those teal blue uniforms. I wish they would bring those back. Those were awesome. So in this, uh, in this video, I am going to be just uh, setting that up. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to go to um, the schedule and we want to make sure that they have 162 games in here because uh, if you remember, the 1994 season was a shortened season, but here we go, October 2nd. So you know if the season's going till October 2nd and... And is starting on April 3rd that it will have a 162 game season but it was an actuality it was a strike short shortened season and they did not get to play all 162 games and um, now you can see um, do I want to save changes no now you can see that the Marlins were um, in 1994 were 51 and 64 so they were well on their way to a losing season and that's okay i just love the uniforms and i love some of the players rob nen was on that team charlie huff i believe was on that team loved that that marlins team i mean it was i mean it's going to be a fun season playing these guys even though we're going to lose um so now the first thing to set this up is um, the very first thing you want to do, I think, when you set up a season is you want to um, make it so that the other, uh, the, the other, that um, you put in the, um, the CMs, the computer managers, for the other teams. And to do that, you have a computer make them. So I have highlighted every team except Florida because Florida is going to be the team I take. And you say um, generate computer manager. It'll ask you if you want designated hitter. Uh, use the designated hitter and the generated managers. And you say no because this is the National League. Now they have made, the computer has made a, um, a CM for every one of the teams. but you're not done yet. You don't just take what the computer sets as your, um, as the other team's CM. You go through and you tweak it and you make it so that the team plays the way that it should. And with Atlanta, I'm going to show an example of what you would do. So the first thing I would do is I go and I look at the uh, lineup, the team lineup. And uh, you just here you're just checking to see if there's any noticeable uh, stupid stuff like a great all-star player is sitting on the bench. Like Javi Lopez, who had 13 home runs. Um, but let's see who he's got at catcher. He has, uh, he has Charlie O'Brien, I guess is, was his name, at catcher. Now, he is a catcher 2E1 with a negative one arm. Javi Lopez is a catcher four and he is a two r he's a righty who's a two r but still 
I'm going to say we're going to put uh, Javi Lopez in. He's probably a little better hitter. And then, of course, you're going to have the pitcher spot here in nine. You got Blouser over here. You got Pakoda, Gallagher. Okay, so let's go to the righty lineup. And I'm not going to get too hung up on making reverse righty and reverse lefty lineups. I'll let the computer take care of that. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to go down to that level of minutia. Uh, but yeah, that looks okay. Uh, in that lineup, he did have Javi Lopez. So the lineups are fine. Now what we do is we go to the team and we go update computer manager. Now what we have is, uh, now the first thing that I usually do when I do other teams computer managers is I check the last pitcher. And in this case, it's Kent Merker to see how many innings he has and whether he could pitch an entire season. Now see, Kent Merker can't pitch an entire season, but yet we are not going to, in fact, let me go back and do that first. So we're going to save. What we're going to do is we're going to go up here to one of these things, file. Um, league. Um, adjust league stats. You go down to adjust league stats. And you can see this says one. That means it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and the players will have the same number of at-bats in, in the uh, league as they actually had and innings pitched. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 1.3. And I found that that's the sweet spot. That's the area where you have enough at-bats and enough innings pitched to get by with everybody that you have easily. Um, but yet it's also not so unrealistic that it um, throws everything off. So now, now we go back to this Atlanta uh, CM file. Team, update computer manager. And now we go look at uh, Merker. And we can see that he has 146 innings. He still really can't get through the entire season, but at least that's a little better than, um, than it was at 112. Now, what you do is you go to uh, starter schedule. Now, something that they've got that's new here, and you can generate, this will automatically generate the, the uh, rotation for the entire season. But if you hit generate and you notice this is new, and this says proportional distribution. They've, now, if you did even distribution, it would just go one through five, one through five, one through five. I'm not sure what it does with proportional distribution, but let's see. Now we go to the uh, we'll go to the end and we'll see how this affects everybody. Maddox it has 37 starts. Now. If you look at Maddox's uh, statistics now with the 1.3, he can pitch 263 innings. So 37 starts isn't out of the uh, isn't out of the realm for him. But if you look at Merker, Merker um, has 24 starts. He ends up at 24 starts, which is fine um, because he has 146 innings. Let me see. Let me type that into the calculator. Um, if we go to the calculator and we say 146 innings divided by 24 starts, that would be six innings per start, which is something we can do. We can just set him to pitch six innings, no more than six innings. And, uh, and then off you go. So we've got that. We'll save that. Also, there is something else I want to look at, and, and this is another thing that you should look at. We'll go to the uh, um, promote demote screen, and we will look here. Now, you see you got 25 guys up. There is, I don't know if there's any room. Mm, yes, there, wait, is no. There's no more room for, well, no, there is. There is one more pitcher. Hill. Now, the question would be, do you want to um, have 
only 11 eligible pitchers or do you want 12? I guess in this situation, we'll stick with 11. It's the National League and they may have to pinch hit a lot for the pitcher. So we'll keep it this way, but you wanna make sure that you have everything set, um, set up correctly now. So now this is only 11 pitchers, so they probably, but like if you have, um, if you do this with like a 2015 or later season, there's gonna be so many pitchers on the, on the roster that sometimes the computer will put starters, part year starters, guys that only pitched like 70 innings, but they were only a starter. They'll be on your um, active roster, your active 25 or 26 man roster. And you don't want that because the guy is only a starter, but yet he's not in the starting rotation. The team, the computer won't put him in the starting rotation. So he just kind of wasted sitting there. I don't know if the computer would pitch him. He might, but anyway, everything looks okay here. So this is good to go. So now you go back to um, update computer manager and, uh, So we've got their rotation is set in. Now you go down every pitcher. Now you got Steve Avery. He had a 404 earned run average, 165 hits and 198 innings. I'm gonna leave him the way he probably is. Um, except we're gonna, you know what? We are gonna say uh, do, um, innings, intentional walk less with this pitcher. And we're gonna do this with the entire Atlanta staff because it was a great staff. You got Steve Bedrosian. Um, I will leave, well, what we're gonna say with him, he's a righty who's a nine R. So we're gonna say avoid lefties. Now, of course, this doesn't really mean anything because the computer, uh, my experience has been the computer doesn't really completely follow that. You've got Mike Bilecki. Uh, he is a righty who's a 9L. I'm not going to do anything with that because um, he's a righty who's better than uh, against lefties. He's basically unbalanced. Um, I'm not going to say don't pitch against one or the other. Um, Glavin, we are going to say, what was his statistics? 17 and 12, 397 earned run average, 214 innings pitched, 225. So we're not we're not even going to say anything to him about him, you know, because you have the option to say um, slow hook, fast hook. We're not going to do that with him. Now Maddox, we may be doing that with. 263, 195 hits. He can go eight innings, a 156 ERA. So we are going to say slow hook with him. Um, and uh, walk fewer uh, batters. In fact, we're going to have to go back and do that to Glavin too. So we will do that to Glavin. Um, walk fewer bat. In fact, with Glavin, you really have to because he has um, a whip that's that's pretty high. Uh, McMichael, seventy-seven innings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll just like keep him that way. Merker. Um, Merker, is he that good? Not really. We'll just leave him, except we will say again, uh, intentional walk less. Uh, Greg Olson. A 920 earned run average for Greg Olson? Well, we're going to... We're gonna definitely put him on quick hook. And we're also, um, I don't usually do this with reverse pitchers, but we're gonna say he's a nine L, so he's much better against lefties, even though he is a righty. We're gonna say avoid uh, righties. Even though again, he's a right-handed pitcher and on the batter's cards, they wouldn't have the advantage, but. Smoltzy, Smoltzy had a 414, 176, 156. Again, I'm just going to say uh, innings, uh, intentional walks less. Mike Stanton, 355, 6053. He's a lefty who's a 4L. Um, I'll say 
uh, avoid um, righties. And Wohlers, is he a reliever? Yeah, he's a reliever. Uh, he's a righty who's a 6R, so we're going to say avoid lefties. Avoid lefties, innings picked, or intentional walks less. Uh, there was something else I was going to do. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, Stanton is the closer, so we will go look at Stanton again. And, well, we're not, we're going to take him off of Void Righties because he's the closer, so he may have to pitch against Righties. But we are going to put him on avoid use during a blowout, avoid use during the sixth, avoid use during the, before the seventh, and avoid use before the eighth, and one to two innings pitched. So we are going to put all of that in effect for Stanton. So now we've done that. You know that we've done the starter schedule. Now we're going to go through and do the batters. And uh, Raphael, and what I do is I just look at their ratings to determine a lot of this stuff up here. So for instance, um, Belliard can bunt. He's not the greatest at hitting and running and he's terrible at stealing. So you would say, don't steal if held. You would say, um, I'm going to leave hit and run up to the computer completely. Um, but you would say bunt more because he can bunt and he's not the greatest hitter. So that would be that for him. Jeff Blauser. Now, Jeff Blauser is a good bunter. He's good at hit and run and he's terrible at stealing. So we'll say uh, bunt more, hit and run more. And uh, don't steal if held. And let's see what he was for um, batting. 258, 329. All right, so now you got Dave Gallagher. I generally only do this for the players that start the season on the roster. I don't do it for the guys that are starting on the bench. But, um, he can bunt. Gallagher can bunt. So the... Now we know the Braves. It looks like the Braves are going to be a bunting team. They're going to bunt when they when they can. Um, don't steal if held. A C again. I'll let the computer decide that. Now you see he's got 198 at bats. So I'm going to say avoid using as a pinch hitter in blowouts because you don't want him doing that. David Justice. We have David Justice here. Now, he cannot bunt, so we'll say don't bunt. You don't want him bunting anyway. He had 25 home runs in not even a full season. Uh, and you don't really want him stealing. Um, don't steal if held. He hit 313, so I'm going to say don't pinch hit against righties or lefties. You don't want somebody pinch hitting for him. Mike Kelly. He was a bunting D, so I'll say don't bunt. I'll say don't hit and run because um, he's not good at that either. And I'll say don't steal if held. And avoid using as a pinch hitter in blowouts because he only had 100 at bats. Roberto Kelly, he is a, um, a bunting D, so don't bunt. And uh, steal, I guess we could say steal more. And he was very good, so we're going to say don't pinch hit for lefties or righties against lefties or righties. Ryan Klesko is, um, let's see, he was, I, I'm not going to say don't pinch hit uh, for him, but he was a terrible bunter, so we're going to say don't bunt. Don't hit and run. Uh, don't steal if held. And you get the idea. I'm going to go through and do this same thing for the rest of the Atlanta um, batters and for every team in the National League because we want to get... Um, I'm not really saying we want to get as realistic a results as possible, but we just don't want to see like a guy with 100 at-bats getting 250. 
You know, you don't want that to happen. Um, we don't want to see um, guys who can't steal trying to steal. So anyway, um, now we'll go to the manager tendencies. Now you notice that they can't, the, these guys really can bunt. So I'm going to say bunting should be aggressive, especially since they generally have good pitching. The, uh, the Braves of the 90s had good pitching. So um, using relief aggressive, I'm going to put that back to normal. I don't think their starting pitching was... I mean, it was worse than you're accustomed to seeing from an Atlanta staff, but I don't think it was bad enough that we should be saying, you know, bring relief in every chance you get. Plus, there's only six relievers on your bench because you're only taking 11 pitchers. So you want to be careful about that. Um, so everything else, I guess, looks about right. You know what? I would say... For stealing, I don't know if it should be normal. We'll keep it at normal, but I'm, I'm not sure that really they should be um, stealing a lot. Intentional walks now we're going to put at, um, at extra conservative. Now, in general, I do that with any team because intentional walks are just a bad idea. If you read anything about... Um, on sabermetrics that talks about intentional walks it's it's just a, a terrible idea except in only very rare circumstances maybe barry bonds of the 2000 early 2000s infield in we're going to say fifth inning um i don't know why the braves would want to consider bringing the infield in any earlier than that um and then uh all of this other stuff, I generally just let it stay the way that it is um, when the computer manager sets it up. So we will keep the other stuff there. And so we go back here and we just say save. And now we have done Atlanta. I, I mean, I still need to finish Atlanta as far as um, the rest of their batters. But you got the general idea of going through. And you, you do this because you want the other team to play. You want the computer teams to play against your team as well as they can. So you want to eliminate things for pitchers and batters that you want to eliminate the possibility of the computer doing things with those pitchers and those players that they probably shouldn't be doing. Um, like, for instance, bunting, if they're a debunter. You, the computer might try to do that a lot, maybe even a lot, but generally it shouldn't be. So now we go to the options, and we go to the options page, rules. Um, uh, we'll say maximum level, uh, use injuries, of course. Um, I'm going to say, uh, for pitcher fatigue, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say use super advanced fatigue rules, but not fatigue rules and pitch count. I don't want to get as draconian as I can possibly get with that. Um, major league rules, we're going to go pre-2020 because this was pre-2020. It was 1994. Um, Injuries, I guess I'll I'll keep where they are. Um, you know, I'm I don't know, 56, 15 and 60 day injuries. Maybe we should go with that because it's a little bit more realistic. Like injuries, you know, like and I was thinking about this the other day. When you come up with a, an injury in the basic game, you can have a player injured for two days which really means that he only misses two days or he only has to miss two games, injured for two games. He only has to miss two games. Nobody who is ever injured in baseball misses two games. If they miss two games, it's because the manager just sat them out for two games. Maybe they had some nicks or something. They're just not, you know, you know, something like that. But if they're actually injured, they're never going to be just sitting out 
just two days. So I'm going to go 1560 60 on that so that you'll get a 15-day injury if you get an injury or a 60-day injury. That brings a little bit of realism into it. I'll say okay on that. Now you go up here and you go lineups and usage. We're going to go draft mode, no rest. That is generally the accepted way to do it if you're going to do a play at home season. Give scheduled days off. No auto swap because I don't want to have the computer making trades during the season. We want the actual 1994 rosters. Um, minor leagues. Um, the, yeah, the minor leagues, we're going to go with the Major League Baseball method uh, method, so that the computer, and why you do this is because then during the season, the computer decides when to bring players up and, and demote players. During injuries, it'll do it. Um, you know, you want the computer doing that because you don't want to have to go through yourself and try for realism purposes to bring players up for other teams and demote them. The computer will do this if you put it on this method. The only thing that is a drawback with this method when you have a play at home league is that he will do it for your team too. And so you'll have like a set lineup and then all of a sudden you see that some guy is playing uh, first base, let's say, um, instead of the guy who was your first baseman. And he will either be ineligible or he'll show is not rested or something like that. Um, I'm willing to live with that, you know, frankly, because um, for the realism of the other, you know, teams in the league, you don't want to have that problem. So let's see here. 25 man rosters, 40 in September. That's how it was in 94. Um try to I'm going to keep it on try to limit overuse. I don't put it on fully control overuse because again, that's a little too draconian for me, but I do want the computer to at least consider um limiting overuse. Again, the realism factor. You don't want a pitcher pitching 350 innings because they didn't do that in 94. They did that in the 70s and 60s, but they didn't do it in 1990. So this is, uh, that's how that would be. Now, let me just go back and double check it and make sure that I didn't lose it when I hit enter because I couldn't go all the way down to the bottom of the screen. So we go lineups and usage. Um, um, and uh, let's see here. Yeah. All right, so it did keep this setting. So yes, it did keep my settings. So let's see what else we have here that we can look at. Um, game preference. Um, I am going to say um, pre-swing play-by-play, that's fine. Play-by-play -play level, I'm going to say minimal. We don't, we don't want a lot of play-by-play. -play. I don't mind some. We don't want a lot. Show flight of the ball, uh, display trivia questions. I'll, you know what, I'm going to take that out. We don't really need that. Display newsworthy events, that's fine. Um, and let's see. We're not going to do this because we're just going to take the Braves, or we're going to take not the Braves, we're going to take the Marlins as our team. So we don't want the computer making the Marlins the um, uh, computer control depending on whether it's home or away. We want to always be controlling the Marlins. Um, I guess that's okay. I guess that everything there is fine. Let's see what else we've got here. Dice cards splits. So here we go. I do want to say show cards in the notebook. Um, Dice rolled automatically, and I'm going to say uh, all three dice stop together. This way, I think you will be able to see the dice rolling on the screen and then showing it going up and down on the columns. I think people like to see that. Um, split cards are automatic. I'm going to keep it that way. So, um, yeah. 
and we're not going to animate the super advanced fielding chart because I don't really want to do that. Okay, and then sound. Um, you know what? I'm going to say take it out because I'm going to take it out anyway when I um, Well, I guess you can't get, oh, wait, there it is. No crowd noise, yeah. No crowd noise, take out the music selections. Um, I'll let the dice and card sound stay, but really, again, you're not really going to hear it because I'm gonna put the sound on the computer down. Um, crack of the bat sound, we'd let that stay in. In fact, actually, I may, I may actually do a dry run maybe before I start recording and see if, it's too distracting to leave these few sounds in with no crowd noise. Um, home run sound we'll leave in, vendor and PA sounds. Um, we'll leave all that stuff in. We'll just take out the music selections and uh, we'll say, um, you know what? We can even make the crowd noise after it bats if we're gonna experiment with the idea, you know, of leaving the sound in. So that is, now the league isn't completely set up because obviously I haven't gone through every team and done the same thing to every team that you saw me do to Atlanta. Um, and in fact, we would have to do that to Florida as well, except, um, yeah. I mean, actually we would do the same exact thing to Florida except that with Florida, as you'll probably see here, um, promote, demote, it didn't make the, well, and it does have 25 guys. So I would go through here and I would tweak this to be the 25 guys I want up. It's possible that this is the 25 guys I would want up. And uh, let's see if they even have a, they, pro, they might have a lineup. Let me see if they have a lineup. Um, team lineups yeah they even have lineups so it's possible i would even stick with these lineups however uh as you can see there is no there is only a righty and a lefty lineup i would go through and also make a, a versus a reverse righty and versus re, uh, reverse lefty uh lineups so but right now we'll just leave that like that we will go through and do all of those things that we need to do to get this league ready to play. And the next time I have a recording about my 1994 Stratomatic Baseball season, you will be watching Marlins opening day. You will see who my uh, chosen opening day starter is, and we will start playing through the season. I'll do it similar to the same way I do out of the park. I'll play games in the background, you know, um, uh, off to the side. And then the next video you see after opening day, it might be game 22, game 18, something like that. Then the next video you see, it might be game 31, 32, something like that. And I'll just update you on how our Marlins had done between those two time periods. But I'm not going to put every game up. If I did that, it would be the only videos that I would be putting on my on my uh, channel. And that I cannot do. So um, what do you guys think of this idea? You got any suggestions for me? Let me know in the comments. Certainly if this is your first time stumbling around and you found my channel and you haven't subscribed, subscribe. It helps me out a great deal, but for right now, that's going to be